Alright guys, so there are no further ado for this video. Basically, I'm going to be talking about the new updates that Affinity has made by pairing with Canva. You know the gist? I think sometime about last year or so, Canva bought Affinity. Like they acquired the app. You know, that's the thing corporately. They acquired the app and a lot of people were scared of, you know, whether it was going to be on a subscription based model or like previously when you could just buy affinity for about six sixty dollars thereabouts you get and to be very honest all these things i'm telling you i don't really care about it because i didn't even use affinity up until today i had always been an adobe guy use adobe photoshop i think i even started using figma earlier this year and recently i started paying for canvas subscriptions use it before i just used it by mistake you get and so that's what prompted me to watch this year's video of canvas updates i was watching it yesterday in my house and you know out of nowhere i just heard that affinity is free now i wouldn't have cared about this if i had not seen you know the display video with the interface and the fact that it talked about vector pixel vector and pixel i don't i don't really care about layouts because i don't use really that much i don't use ink design that much um but something that looks like illustrator and photoshop being on one platform i think that is mind-blowing because there's sometimes i'm working on a file on illustrator and i want to edit it the way photoshop would edit it but it's hard is is just just the mentality and the whole mind draininess of having to open illustrator and photoshop bruh let's just go to the screen i'm just going to be highlighting some things and yeah for those of you that are still scared and doubtful about it here's just basically how it works so i think it's very easy um if you call here there's like the vector platform and once you just click on the vector of platform you see the difference in the tools available there are tools like um the shape builder tool you have um the node tool i think the shortcuts are almost the same though i didn't see any shortcut for the shape builder okay shape builder tool is you can get it by just clicking s that's weird so i think that's another thing too with the new affinity if you're going to embrace it and stop paying 22.91 dollars for every tool on adobe opt out to that for free um it means that you might have to learn new shortcuts but i don't think it's something far fetched at the end of the day too if you were somebody that used figma and adobe you probably had to learn new shortcuts for figma did you i don't know i don't know but it's nothing is i think it's a little price to pay for like what we're getting for for free so yeah once you just go into pixel and i got to learn that you know previously it used to be affinity designer and affinity photos so this is not necessarily photoshop and illustrator it is affinity, affinity designer affinity photos and affinity publisher turning into vector pixel and layout then the one that people like me get to participate in is canva ai because i already have like a canva premium account so if you don't want that that's fine then i noticed that when i came here i went to the pixel so if you go to pixel you go to um filters and you see other filters i kept on looking for camera roll i don't think they would have called it camera roll but i kept on looking for something like that but i then realized that you're not going to find camera roll here if you want to edit an image you just come to color grading and you edit the image let me see if i can get something from my um gallery and this this mock-up is here for a reason because I just found out a mind-blowing fact about applying mock-ups on a, an affinity. And I don't know if this had already existed prior to now, but, you know, I'm not an affinity person, so I didn't used to be an affinity person. So, yeah. Let's just let's just use this image, for example. Um, increase it. Yeah. Then go to quick adjustments. You can easily increase the exposure here. So this is like your camera raw and i think this is mind-blowing because prior to now in order to use camera raw you had to leave supposedly leave the app and there's like this whole scope and historogram something here when you open 
color grading you get you do the white balance so i think they need to add some other things like um i think oh there's something that comes with clarity forgotten the name of it but i think this i think this works as it as it yeah but yeah basically this is your camera roll then another mind-blowing thing i found out about the app is the image tracing ability of the app so prior to now what you do is i put the image on illustrator and <laughs> like somebody say pray that any of the uh, let me open illustrator so you see what i'm saying so prior to now what you do is put the image on illustrator and pray that any of the illustrator tools is able to you know bring the so like for example let me say this image now i put it on illustrator then i want to use like the image trace yeah image trace is what i'm talking about now so because this image is not that clear you might not really get so much from it so if i go to image trace for example and go to default this is what i'm going to get it's going to be very sharp then let's say i want to retain the colors i probably want to do high fidelity and this is the best that you can give me it's wrinkled i still have to do so much on it but here's what it looks like on uh, affinity so you just upload the image uh, oh so i'm i'm learning a few things from this i feel like what you should do is upload the image to um the art board so it doesn't open a new page yeah so you upload the image here you come to vector the image being selected you come to vector and you come to image trace and you cannot trace the image and now you can actually control the image trace curve fit tolerance i don't really know what it is but i know that you can use it to control the image trace do you understand yeah at least that is better apply all you just have to do is come here on group delete this and you have this then you can now churn out the things that you don't want to churn out that you want to churn out and you know this is this is way better guys this is way way better um i've been seeing some complaints online as to is ai going to you know i actually actually get what they're saying you get because we are used to adobe collecting money from us from the people that be we used to adobe collecting a large sum of money i think when you, even when you are trying to leave adobe is a termination fee and now having to come and tell the creative industry generally but let's just say the design industry that you know this stuff is for free some people are having concerns i if i go on twitter when i went to twitter um on instagram on affinity's page people are having concerns that if a corporation is not charging you to use their product you are the product like i remember when chargibity came out initially it was free we were the products they were testing they were using us to test the ai so that they can make it better and now charge for it i think in now is about that something thousand there usually before it used to be nine thousand thousand i had a subscription like um same thing for canva when it came out at first it was free and before you know it went to canva but i think for a, a corporation as big as canva coming out to say that affinity pro is free forever I want to believe that they are going to hold on to that word at least for the next five years before they start charging. At least for the next five years. You get and that's five years of not paying for your software. And I think that's that's amazing. The second thing I want to say you can actually turn off the use of AI to you know your data, your information and whatnot. If you're clicking one of the links, I'll put a link in the description below where you can um, go and change the settings on your Canva account so that Canva doesn't have access to use up your data for AI development and whatnot. Do you understand? Thirdly, I don't know if you guys are noticing that there is a catch here. Even though the catch is not as big, but the catch is that they get a lot of people to unsubscribe from Adobe and get a canva account and so when you get a canva account they are probably going when you get a canva account that's when you can be able to access and they are probably going to 
be advertising you their stuff once in a while to get you to buy it. Like for example, you can use AI on Canva and guess what? AI is getting better and better and better. Imagine having to be a designer and not being able to use AI. I think that's one of the biggest things that Figma is trying to advertise in this year's launch of Figma and whatnot. So I think that's the catch. I, I want to believe that that's the catch. The catch is basically, first of all, a loss on Adobe side because I love the way it comes in this fight. A loss on Adobe side and, you know, a gain on the Canva side of things. Yeah, I think I just remember something I was, I was about to show us. So two things, at least the ones I can remember now because this video is like a very immediate impromptu reaction video to what has just happened because it really blew my mind. So the first thing is, I mean, if you come here and click on the A here, that's that's true. I also heard that some people had like, you know, feedback to the new Affinity logo. I really like it. I think it's giving me the vibe of Jita. And, you know, like it's like a modern logo, very easy to read, vibrant colors and whatnot. Yeah. So Affinity has been able to, I don't think this, illust this, um, these tutorials are enough, but they basically highlight the new things that they've added to affinity so i think they are just thinking okay for some people that i think their thought process is basically for some people that are new to affinity and for people that have already been in affinity let them understand the new things that we are doing there's one too that the there's one um feature that it has now i think it's called the live i've not really gotten a grasp of a lot of things but yeah i've not also really gotten a grasp of that but let's see if we can do something so it's called the live filter um option so there is this let's see this is like an image you ripple it um let me look for this image yeah i i noticed that so you can actually exactly so it's like a live filter yeah, yeah, yeah. you can actually just edit it on the go and i think this is really amazing for like very creative designs and whatnot i think you can actually even um put like a layer max and brush off the ones that you don't and you brush off the side in the design that you don't want this to show here yeah, paint brush and brush let's see i didn't select the layer max let me select it now paint brush and yeah why is this not working? Alright. I think I actually have to get. So I had seen somebody do this online there. But yeah, you can actually basically do amazing things with this. I think for me, the biggest thing I'm celebrating right now is how you can transition from vector to pixel at a go. Now, let me show you another thing that blew my mind. You know how when you use when you when you use mockups on Photoshop, you have to when you apply a new change on like the embedded side of things, you have to now press Control S in order for you to apply on the mockup. Guess what? You don't have to because all you just have to do is move it and it moves. Let's take it back to Pixel. Yeah. So what's all you just have to do is apply the change and it moves it's kind of like it's called embedded embedded <laughs> once you just move it it moves automatically and so that means you can actually even remove this here and bring it as like another screen yeah just bring it here and see it move automatically this makes mock-up the creation of mock-up like very easy and takes it to the next level can you imagine? I think this is mind blowing. Um, if you're going to be using the Affinity software, I'm going to put a link in the description as well for you to download the software. It is free to use according to what they told us. And um, this video is not sponsored by Affinity in any way possible. I don't think <laughs> Affinity even knows myself. But you know, you guys can shout to me. I'm um I'm going to actually do more videos in the future concerning Affinity and how you know things and tips it might be short it might be you know full-on length videos like this one right now yeah showing you how i've used affinity and you know what i'm learning new and you know 
basically i think i want to just urge designers out there even though you're not going to use affinity in your day-to-day just get get to know it because if you're going to i think what's going to happen now is because companies pay for adobe they might see it as a safer option and a better option to now incorporate affinity in their workflow and so what that means is that you know the way you see on cvs you know the way you see on job job descriptions you need to where people say you know you need to have knowledge of adobe illustrator adobe photoshop and whatnot i think now is going to they're going to either add or substitute adobe photoshop and illustrator with affinity and so you want a situation whereby you are open to getting these opportunities just so you know i've installed my photoshop because i don't need it anymore um yeah let me know if you're going to download and start using affinity in the comment section below it's free to use for android <laughs> it's free to use for apple and windows users yeah see you on the next one peace out